For at TV, the world is thinking. Today we have the results. I understand it was because of your concerns about the high level of contaminants in the orcas that led to your being curious about what these results in humans might be, especially since we consume the same fish. And also we're at the top of the food chain, just the same way the orcas are at the top of the food chain in the marine environment. You each have released permission that I could see the results first so that I could go ahead and make these charts. Each graph is going to have the amount, and then each of our names are along here. Jean-Michel, Carrie, Holly, and Holly's son, Gavin, and myself, we all agreed to be tested. 50% of the population are below that level, and this line, 95% are below that level. And these numbers were done by the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, where they actually monitored several thousand people. Low is better. <laughs> you want to be low. So first, the PCBs. Uh, polychlorinated biphenyls. These are manufactured chemicals that actually have been banned now since the 1970s, but because they have a long half-life, they're actually still in our environment and we're still getting exposed to them even today. Where you find this chemical is actually in fatty fish, fatty meats, and actually even dairy fats. I'm high uh, on PCB. Yes, Gusto. Yeah. You are indeed above the 50th percentile. We sort of look very similar, don't we? Carrie, looking very good. Holly, you never no. did salmon or? I've never eaten fish, but definitely a meat-based diet growing up, but not in the last 10 years, so I'm not sure how long PCBs actually stay so within my fat. Well, the half-life, they say, is 10 to 15 years. Mm. So now, Gavin, oh. tell us about Gavin's diet. Oh, wow, that's alarming. Does he eat? Fish and meat and... No, we're on same diet. Same um, diet. The other thing I was thinking too was um, dairy fats too. Um, whole milk or... No. Soy milk. Soy milk, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. They have shown that they can transfer from breast milk. Now, we don't want to send the wrong message. There's even some studies that show that the special fatty acids that you get from breastfeeding, which aren't present in infant formula, might actually protect you from whatever toxin you, you might be exposed to. So again, a lot of benefits to breastfeeding, um, but perhaps this might be slightly what we're seeing here in terms of Gavin testing a little higher. So our next one is the PBDEs, polybrominated diethyl ethers, the so-called flame retardants, okay? Now these are also manufactured chemicals that were added to products to make them flame resistant. Electronic equipment, uh, you'll find it in home furnishings, couches. They've shown that there are high levels in dust and this is a study that looked at some of the concentrations, Germany, UK, Canada, and then they looked at some Massachusetts, Washington, but look at us, California. California. We are way up oh. there. Products have to pass a flammability standard, but obviously we're now realizing that perhaps there's a downside. What we do know is, is that children have a lot higher level of these flame retardants than moms. Uh, this is one study, fire retardants and toddlers and their mothers. And that's because where do kids spend their time? They spend on it on the, the floor. And in the orcas, they are seeing that this level is going up, uh, not down. How does it get into the orcas? It gets into the orcas from the environment and just Passes Wash up the, down the streams and into the, the food, food chain. chain yep. Let's go on to uh, the results. There I am, Jean-Michel. Wow. You didn't come in too badly on this one. Carrie, we'll do you next. Okay, you look pretty good on that one. Holly, according to this, um, you're definitely higher than the 95th percentile. Um, and we might as well just forge ahead and see Gavin as well while we're here. So, according to Dr. Petraeus up at Berkeley, she really thinks this relates to something in the home environment. Mm -hmm. um, she sees these kind of levels and... Now remember, Holly, these are just numbers. I know. He's testing the way we expected him to. Mm -hmm. We know that children are high. <laughs> That's shocking. That is really shocking. Which is better? Is it better to keep them in the products because are we preventing 
lots of fires. Is there an understanding with the increase of the use of these products and the increase of chronic disease within kids that we're experiencing today and learning about today? Well, again, that's the whole point of this study is because we just don't have numbers yet. Um, but I think it's frustrating for people because we can't correlate for you exactly what does that number mean in terms of your individual risk, which is, of course, what you want to know.